Okay, gang, as many of you know, I've upgraded my camera. Got an external mic. Got the learning curve of turning it around. All that fun, happy stuff. Another issue that I'm having is one with the product that I had to pay $50 for that works when it wants to. And that is the microphone adapter for the Hero 5. You guys are going to see in the video that there's a big gap where there's a lot missing between point A and point B. I apologize for that, but I will revisit it when I get my fuel bowl gaskets in for the Honda. I went through the carburetors today. So let's go on ahead to the footage and let you guys hear the parts that do have audio. And I sincerely apologize, but I will be revisiting the carburetors to replace the fuel bowl gaskets. And at that time, I will go over again everything that I did. Um, I actually shot a 14 minute video on every step that I took and had zero audio. Ugh! Frustrating! So right now, I have a rubber band strapped around the GoPro holding the adapter, which is a USB-C, into the GoPro so that I don't run as much of a risk of losing audio. It, it just doesn't fit tightly. You know, the standard micro USBs, mini USBs, you plug them in, they stay plugged in. These USB-Cs, not a fan. Anyway, on to the video. I guess this is the moment everybody's been waiting for. We're going to get started on the carburetors. I've got all the intakes marked. One, two, three, and four. So that when I pull the carburetors off to go through them, I will not end up mixing them up so that they all go back in the same spot. And I'm also going to retain the settings. Get myself a little pad of paper and write down what each setting currently is. Then I'll go through and clean them really well and hope for the best. They're not clamped down in here. So. Anyway, this is a new venture for me, so getting into these, uh, I am referencing the book to make sure that I do my due diligence and get everything just right. I can rebuild a big Briggs carburetor blindfolded and in my sleep. So, I mean, a carburetor is a carburetor, but the settings on these have got to be just perfect. So, I'm hoping that the current settings on them are good and that when I disassemble everything and reassemble everything that I get the settings right back where they were then I can put the synchronizer on and they're all going to test okay that's in a dream world that that would happen but I've still got fuel in the bowl so I need to drain the bowls out and then we'll pop the screws off the bowls and take a look and see what we've got underneath there. So sit tight. Alright gang, time to see what kind of carnage we have underneath these fuel bowls. All the screws are already pre-loosened. Zippo's not talking, so he's sitting here concentrating. <laughs> Don't want to lose or drop any of these screws. None of these were very tight at all, which 
kind of surprise me. I mean, a one-year-old could have loosened all these screws. Last one. Okay, here comes the reveal. They actually don't look too bad. Ah ha ha, that is awesome. I'll just hope the other three look as good as this one. There's just there's just the the slightest little bit. I'm thinking I just need to do a quick cleaning, make sure that my um, needles passages are clear. This one feels a little yucky. Well, again, we're pretty good. I do have quite a bit of junk in the very bottom of each of the carburetors that I'll get cleaned up. This one's got more. And when I dumped the fuel out, uh, number two did not dump any fuel out. Uh-oh. Bill or somebody used a little bit of RTV. There's the tiniest little bit of RTV on that. Number three. Now, number three was giving me the most problem. Yeah, I can see we're clogged. And see, the, the RTV is down in the bowl. That gets sucked up into the carburetors and just clogs everything up. I'll bet if the RTV had not been put on there, that everything would have just been dandy with it. Get this gasket off and I'll give you guys a closer look but everything is looking really nice. I'm going to order new bowl gaskets. Yeah, I mean all four bowls look real decent. Even though they had all that nasty gas in them, I was afraid I was going to run into a ton of oxidization, but there's not, so I am really happy about that. Now let's get this up a little closer so you guys can see. I want to leave this last gasket on and show you guys all the RTV and how the RTV has gotten inside. That's something you never, ever, ever want to do if you're having a problem keeping these gaskets on. These gaskets expand over time, and if you try to reuse them like Bill or the previous owner before Bill, then you're going to run into issues. But number two, if we look here, we're pretty cruddy here. Not too bad, but pretty cruddy. But all in all, I'll bet all I'm going to be doing is just blowing, um, yeah, blowing, uh, passages out, cleaning all the passages up. Uh, I may not even need to go through and rebuild them entirely. And it's easy enough to go through them and toss them in the carburetor cleaner. I will remove all of these floats so that I can get to uh, yeah, that needles. All the needles were stuck. All the needles were stuck. Okay. I'm going to go through and just clean everything out as best I can. I don't see any reason to rebuild these carburetors at all. And I'm real pleased to see that. I, I bet I've just got a ton of... RTV sealant inside the jets and that's what's keeping things from going. Now, one gentleman was talking to me about the throttle plate positions. And 
making sure that they were all even. So I've got my choke plates. This one looks like it's out just a little bit. And I see the adjustments here to make sure that they're all even. So now I'm understanding what he was talking about. So thank you very, very much for those suggestions. I've got that now. I now see adjustments here with these three screws will even out all these throttle plates so that they're even across the board. And then we come to the intake side and I'm assuming we've got the same situation over here. Okay, no. No, no throttle plates on this side. We just have the pumps on this side with the needles. So, where our major problem is, I believe, is in our pickups here and possibly in the jets. What number jets are on there? Number 35s. Carburetors don't look bad. They really don't. I'm just going to go through, clean everything up, gently blow everything out, wait on new gaskets to come in, reassemble it, throw them back on the bill, and see where we stand. Let's keep our fingers crossed that when we put the synchronizer on that we're in good shape. And the synchronizer actually goes on the intake runner and not the carburetors. You can see the screws a lot easier here. Like here, here, and then the same over here. Where's my finger? Here and here. So it was really pretty painless taking out, taking the carburetors out, and uh, now I'll be able to get in here and clean this a little better. But the rest of the engine cleaned up really well. All right, you had the first part of it and the second part breaking the carburetors open. I hope you guys are all as pleased as I am about how clean the insides are. I think they're just jammed up with. And there I go, talking to the wrong end of the speaker again. Well, I sure hope you guys heard everything I just said. I gotta do something with this microphone speaker. I call it a speaker. I've gotta do something with that microphone. Um, that's just aggravating. And the tank is finished, guys. It's sitting over there. And what happened? Well, I didn't have my audio cable plugged in right. And I've done that a number of times too. Boy, what a learning curve. Zippo's getting frustrated. But it'll all be all right. Uh, the tank is, has been cleaned and the rust has been eliminated. And I did discover where this scaling came from in the tank. It came from the very top of the tank. The very top. All up here. All of it came from up here where the moisture had gotten up into it and apparently the tin coating was weak on the top of the tank. Um, but the tin coating inside the tank looks awesome. When I ran the uh, evapo rust through it and, and dumped everything, excuse me, dumped everything out, all that was left was just a couple of little lacquer spots where lacquer was stuck to the tin coating but the tin coating is great. So, I still haven't decided whether I'm gonna put this in or not. I'll tell you the reason why. Putting this in is the easy part, pour it all in. Getting out all of the excess is gonna to prove to be really difficult because of the way I got my bore, put my bore scope in there and where the fuel pet cock goes on, there's a raised rectangular cup that sits on the bottom of the tank that's raised up, I'd say, half inch to three quarters of an inch. So it's gonna, that's going to keep that much of the red coat in there unless I dump it out 
the mount. Well, I've got the same problem with the gas fill. There's a lip, and the lip stands down into the tank about a quarter of an inch. So getting all of the red coat, the excess red coat out, I, I mean, it, it, they say that if it pulls, it'll skin over, and when it skins over, you will end up with uh, an area that will not cure underneath because of it skinning over. It won't allow the rest of it to evaporate. And I just I don't know what to do about it. But the way that the tank turned out and the, how clean the tank is, and I'm not going to be running anything but ethanol-free gas in this bike. I'm also going to have conditioners and fuel line antifreeze and water displacement in the tank at all times as well. Um, so some of you might think that I'm nuts for doing it, but that's the route I'm going to start with is going ahead and using the tank as it is. Uh, I got all the rust scale out of the top of the tank. Um, I know a lot of you guys are probably just going, oh, Zippo, really? You're really going to do that? You're really going to do that? But I'm not going to put the tank on or put any gas in until I am done with these carburetors. So if enough of you say that I'm super foolish for not coating the tank, then I will coat the tank. And also, I'm open to suggestions on how to get the excess red coat out of the tank. It's kind of got me stymied just because of the lips and everything. It's not going to be an easy task to get it all out of there. So anyway, that's where I'm at with the tank. Uh, the tank turned out beautiful on the inside. The outside, I worked on for about an hour and a half yesterday, cleaning it out. I guess you guys can look at the carburetors while I'm sitting here talking. Um, I spent a lot of time on the tank, compounding it, cleaning it, polishing it, waxing it. And there were spots on the tank that I thought were chips that turned out to not be chips. It was paint over spray, silver paint over spray. That apparently Bill or the previous owner to Bill had spattered in a, just two places on the tank. But I actually had to get my jeweler's loop out, take a look at it, and look into the jeweler's loop and get real close to it to see if it was on the surface or if it was an actual chip and that's when I discovered it was just paint so I was able to gently chip that paint off and polish over it and everything all, uh, all the planets aligned so to speak so anyway that's that 